Good evening. Hope we are all good. Just on our way to our evening boxing sessions tonight. So we have boxing in Marlborough tonight. We also have sessions in Devizes. So, which is actually about to start. So, the boxing session is also from home too, which is cool. Wanted to talk about the keto diet, which came up yesterday. I need a shave. Bloody hell. It's been one of those, one of those weeks. Turkish barber is, is due. Hey, Ellie. So, I want to talk about the keto diet, which came up this week in our kickstart. One of the questions was about the keto diet. Should I do it? Should I not? That's the key question. Now, I'll go over the keto diet. For those that don't know, it is a 75%... 75% fat diet, officially, 20% car- uh, protein, 5% carbs. So 75% fat, 20% protein, 5% carbs. Hey Sue, hey Jackie. So given that, it's very hard to stick to. That is literally like getting full fat beef and bacon and chucking lard on top of it. It's quite hard. Hey Barbara, hey Sally. So given that, when people use the word keto diet or the phrase keto diet, I would argue they're actually more talking about a lower carb diet slash a higher protein diet, which can be a tool to use to help with fat loss, weight loss. Now, the reason keto diets um, were essentially looked at and initially were more to do with cancer. So in cancer patients, there may be some evidence to suggest in certain cancers that it may be beneficial during treatment or alongside treatment, sorry. Um, but even that is, you know, you want to look into that yourself. Epilepsy, so there is some research to suggest that it can help with epilepsy. Now, with regards to fat loss and weight loss, the reason, the main reason it works is a lot of people find it an easier way to create a calorie deficit because you cut out a third of your plate, right? So if you cut out a third of your plate, that's a third of your macronutrients gone. So that's like carbohydrates are now gone. So you're gonna eat a third less potentially. Not to mention when you eat a lower carb diet, you've got to put something in the tank, right? So you tend to, tend to eat more protein. Protein keeps you more full up for longer. The result of that is that we eat less and feel more satisfied. We eat fewer calories but the volume of food may be higher because we then eat more vegetables. Maybe we fill our plate with vegetables, green vegetables, as opposed to carbohydrates. Hey, Anne. So there are the benefits of it. Now, where does it go wrong? Well, for me, just checking I don't get run over. For me, it goes wrong when we think we've got to stick to it 100%, number one, because let's face it, social events, family events, meals out, you know, if my wife's doing the cooking one day which is very rare she won't watch this anyways it's fine um and we're doing sweet potato chips white potato chips whatever rice i'm not going to say i don't want that i might do sometimes but if she's if it's a special meal you know i can have the flexibility to go oh you know what i'll have that but i'll lower my fat intake so i know the calories will be the same so it's learning to be flexible with it however if there's times where I'm more in control of my food, I actually prefer to eat a lower carb diet, not a keto diet, a lower carb diet. Why? Because it lowers the fermentation of the foods I eat, which in short can help with IBS, bloating, flatulence, etc., which makes me feel better because I do have a tendency for IBS. So if I eat too many like fibrous foods, beans, pulses, whole grains, stuff like that, I tend to get symptoms. So a lower carb diet in general helps anyway. That doesn't mean I avoid carbs all the time. You know, my favorites are berries, sweet potatoes, um, like jasmine rice, but I don't have it that often. So yeah, being quite flexible is the key thing with it. Knowing that calories is the king, but actually you can come on and off it a little bit. It could be that you do a few days where you're more in control, you're busy at work. This is something that I do as well. You're busy at work, you wanna control your hunger more. So you do it then and you need to eat less then as a result of that. It may mean that you you just be a bit more balanced with your meals across the week as a result of that. You think outside the box, you don't go to your go-tos all the time, like, oh, I just have toast, I just have that. It maybe creates a bit of a rule for you that you say, right, I only eat carbohydrates at my evening meal on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I'm just making stuff up. But when you make rules like that, It creates boundaries, but you have freedom within it. And I think it's important that we get the balance between going, just eat in moderation and 
going, right, I can eat anything I want, but this is when I'm going to do it. And then it becomes a choice. You're in control, but you have boundaries. Because you have too much choice, guess what happens? We do nothing or we go backwards. So, that, that's kind of my thoughts on keto. If you've ever done keto before, do comment below. Let me know your thoughts on it, your experiences on it. I know a lot of people who do great on it. Some of the ladies I work with now, they do it and they do great on it. Not a keto diet, I must say. It's actually more of a lower carb, higher protein diet. But not everyone. It's not for everyone. And it's definitely not needed to lose weight. However, I just want to touch on some research, which keeps coming out time and time again, which may be more important than whether you go keto or not. And this is the fact that when they look at studies, so there was a recent study, which I'm actually sharing tomorrow. Tomorrow I'm doing a lecture for nutrition students at Oxford Brooks University on Zoom this time, unfortunately. That's the way it is at the moment. And one of the studies I'm actually going over is an eight-year study where they followed people up over eight years who have done really well with their weight loss. And what they're looking at is how a lifestyle intervention, so similar to what we do, providing support, one-to-ones, exercise sessions, check-ins, making sure keeping you accountable. Time and time again, the research keeps showing that regardless of the diet you choose, guess what the key thing is? The key thing is every time is the amount of sessions you turn up to, the amount of contact with people you have in, whether that's your friend, your accountability buddy, whatever you want to call it, a coach, nutritionist, whatever it is, the more people you have accountable to better, the more bigger your support group, the better. And we see it with our sessions, like, especially right now, it's probably the most normal thing a lot of the ladies do at the moment. I had a chat with one of the ladies earlier and she was like, everywhere else, you know, feels a bit weird. When I come to the sessions, it just feels like life's normal again. Like, yeah, you're wearing a visor, but we don't wear masks. We're in our zones. We can chat, socially distance. We can work out, socially distance. I feel safe, but it's actually nice to speak to people. Like, I can be in a room with six people, more than six people, working out, spaced out, and it feels normal. And when you think about that, not just in these times, but just in general, how powerful it is to go, oh, where were you last week? You get a message, not just from me saying, where were you? Especially in these times where you have to book in your session, book in your time. You know, if you don't turn up, I'll chase you up because not just for not turning up, but also because someone else might want your space. So we're very short on spaces at the moment. So as you can imagine, and that, that is so under, undervalued when we look at diets, when we look at fitness, all these things, in just how important your support network is. Hey Debbie, hey Anna. So I hope that helps with regards to keto diets. I hope that helps with regards to thinking about how you can maybe stay more motivated, get more motivated, stay accountable to it. We can go on for this for days, weeks, but I'm, I'm coming up to spec savers, I believe. Or if I walk past, let me put, I should probably have my glasses on. Hopefully the optician isn't watching this. So anyway, I hope this helps. Any questions, let me know. As always, Put your questions below send me messages if you do have any questions questions we are our next kickstart will start in november we've got a few spaces in marlborough our devices ladies only studios opening up in devices in november exciting news more on that later but if you want to be first on the waiting list for that do let me know as ever, we have our home kickstart program as well, starting in November, our 28 day kickstart, which you can do all from home as well. That's in November. Drop me a message if you want more details, but in the meantime, any questions, let me know and speak soon. It is boxing time. So I need to get ready. Bingo boxing tonight. All the fours, 44. Is that the one? Somebody's den, number 10. Drop one in the comments. If you've got any good bingo rhymes, drop some in the comments because I need some for tonight. I've got a microphone ready and everything. Thank you, Sally. Glad you enjoyed it. Somebody's Den, number 10. Um, 66, clickety click. Five and nine, the Brighton line. Woo That's the one. I'll stop now. See you soon. Take care.